प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह गणेशम आराद नीजे हरि कृष्ण आराद नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे ठाकुर जी महाराज नीजे सदगुरु देव की जय सुप्रीम ओमाइडी सदगुरु श्री मुक्तानंद स्वामी हिज वेरी पर्सनल एंड आवर ठाकुर जी महाराज आर डिवाइन गुरु परंपरा पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो एंड ऑल वी भक्तोज जय स्वामी नारायण दिस इज अ न्यू बिगेनिंग फॉर आवर यू आर कोर्स 2021. This is week one, and today for our yoga course, we would like to discuss Avachanamrut and Avat from Puja Guru Chiri's Vato Kalyankarnika, and also take two charitras. This week is designed for those in need of. Destroying or eradicating swabhaus. Swabhaus is something that each and every human on this earth has, meaning nature. When we see the next slide here, what is swabhau? We'd like to base all these three bullet points off of the Vachnamrut Kadada Middle Chapter 37. So, just to explain, what is swabhau? So Bao is one's own nature. Now, nature meaning in what way? Well, nature meaning in every way. The nature to become angry. The nature to stay silent. The nature to have ego. The nature to stay humble. So nature is a general word used which has two splits, one being negative one being positive. So, nature can be good, nature can be bad, as all, we, as all we know about. But, the very focal point of this Vachnamrut that we're going to read has more to do with negative natures, sobhavs that Bhagwan and his Satpurush do not like. Now, the problem is that our positive or good nature, the Satpurush and Bhagwan like, staying humble, having affection for God and His Santo Bhakto, having a, a good form of surrendership, having a kind nature. All these are positive and good natures. This is not this problem. The problem is that there are some Swabhaus in natures that are not suitable for Bhagwan and his Satpurush. If I can give you an example. When we go to our friend's house, there is one friend that has a very clean and neat, nice house which has a good fragrance and is very, very up to date. There is another friend you have you like his nature, you like him as a friend, but when you go into his house, it smells horrible. When you go into his house, it is very, very dirty. When you go into his house, everyone is very loud and shouting. What would you prefer or who would, whose house would you prefer to go to? Easy. The friend's house who is nice, clean, neat, because it's suitable to your nature and you like that kind of environment. In the same way, Bhagwan's divine abode, Akshardham, let's take it in the reference of a house. 
Bhagwan's house is very neat and clean. It is very peaceful and radiant, very divine and silent. And right now, here on earth, we as a person may have a nature of ego, greed, anger, hypocrisy, so on and so forth that Bhagwan does not like in his house. So Bhagwan is saying, if you want to come to my home, my divine abode, Akshardham, you will have to do one thing. You will have to remove your swabhaus, remove your nature in the form of all these different vices that I mentioned. And then I will give, keep you, or I will give you entrance into my home. But without that, it's not possible. So as we know, we figured out what swabhau is. It's our own innate nature. Number two, what is a problem? We just figured out. Now, after we have developed and found out what the problem is, there is always a solution to eradicate. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan's own vani, paravani, his own speech, the Vachnamrut, gives us the solution. The Vachnamrut is such a, 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 a granth, such a book, that it has all the solutions, not for only on this earth, but also for all the, you can say, problems that we may reach after birth. Meaning, to destroy life and death, to become Brahmrup, to become one with God, to understand Bhagwan's Ekantik Satpurush, to develop Sant Samagam, to eradicate one's nature, to become completely beyond this world, to develop Dharma, Bhakti, Gnana, Vairagya, to become Ekantik. One needs to have the study of the Vachnamrut. Because Bhagwan Swaminarayan's own Vani or speech is the greatest of all speeches, is the greatest of all words, is the best solution for everything. But there is just one stipulation that Bhagwan Swaminarayan states. If you want to learn from the Sastras or scriptures, you will need an Ekantik Satpurush. Without the association of an Ekantik Satpurush, Without the association or without having Sant Samagam in your life, you will not be able to understand the scriptures. And if you try to understand the scriptures, you might, there is a chance of misinterpretation. Therefore, if you want to learn, learn from the Akantik Satpurush. We are very fortunate as Loyadam Parivar members to have the not the association, but to have the very company, the very mother-like figure of an Ekantik Sadpurush in the form of our Puja Guruji. Our Puja Guruji's life, our Puja Guruji's divinity, our Puja Guruji's character is so divine that one only has to fold one's hands when one comes in front of him. Such a nature that everyone can adjust to, such an easygoing nature, such a, such a very, very divine nature that we can only say that Bhagwan is living inside of him and doing all of his works. There is no other words that can put our Satpurush into a measuring cup. So we would like to first analyze and read this Vachnamud Gadara, middle chapter 37. And then we'll go about and understand. Swami Narayan Hare. So the Vachnamrut starts as like this. All of the Munis thought over the question, but it appeared as if could not answer Sri Maharaj's question. What is the question? Swami Narayan Bhagwan says, In the Gita, it is said that even a person possessing Gnan, meaning knowledge, behaves according to his nature. And not even the strength of self-control mentioned in the scriptures is effective in such cases. How then can such innate natures be eradicated? So the question is, how can a person, even if a person who has gnan, 
is not able to develop or destroy such a sense to eradicate one's nature, what is the way to do so? So the Munis, meaning the Santos, could not answer. So Bhagwan himself says, the answer to this is as follows. When the Satpurush understand, Bhakto, the description of a Satpurush cannot be put into measurement. But just to put things into perspective, according to the Vachnamrut Gadada, last chapter 26, the Satpurush is one who suppresses the Indriyas and mind, who behaves as Atma, behaves as a Brahmrup, and worships God, believes Bhagwan Swaminarayan to be Sarvopari, is beyond the Panchvishes, is beyond Maya, is Triguna Tit, or beyond the three qualities of Rajagun, Tamogun, and Satvagun. Such a Satpurush that we have received. Remember, Loyadam Parivar Bhakto. When the word Satpurush comes inside of the Vachnamrut, our mind's vrutti should automatically go to our Satpurush in the form of Puja Guruji. When the Vachnamrut states Sant, when the Vachnamrut states Mota Purush, when the Vachnamrut states Sadhu, all these words, when we read them, it should go, our mind should go to our Puja Guruji. Because for us, he is our spiritual harbor. For us, our Puja Guruji is the one that can take us to Akshardham. Then where else do we need to go and find someone else? Why not look at these qualities that Bhagwan Swaminarayan has mentioned in the Vachnamrut, in our Pragat Satpurush, our manifest Satpurush that we have received? Why not? Why not develop in a way to to connect ourselves with the Satpurush so we can go to Akshardham with very little ease? Why not? Therefore, when the word Satpurush or any of these words that I mentioned in the Vachnamrut come, understand them that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is talking about the Satpurush that we have received that we have contact with as of now, as Loyadam Parivar Bhakto. When the Satpurush gives guidance on how to eradicate such swabhaus, natures, if a person has total faith in his words, if he has deep affection for the Satpurush giving the guidance, and no matter how, if he has deep affection for the Satpurush giving guidance, and no matter how painfully strong the Satpurush's words seem, if he accepts those words to be for his own benefit, then his innate natures will be eradicated. Except for this, there is no other method. Therefore, regardless of how much God or the Satpurush insults him for the purpose of eradicating his sobaos, and regardless of the harsh words they may utter, a person who wishes to eradicate his innate natures should not feel hurt in any way and should consider the virtues of the person advising him. If one behaves in this manner, then that nature, which otherwise could not be eradicated in any way, is eradicated, meaning destroyed. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is such a practical Bhagwan that his answers are very, very straightforward and simple and very, very practical to understand. Now, Bhagwan Swaminarayan did not say that if you have innate natures, so bows that are, that are being an obstacle on the pathway to God, do thousand maras, do one thousand pradakshinas, read scriptures, do yagnas, make donations. Bhagwan Swami Narayan did not state any of these solutions. He stated to go to his Ekantik Satpurush. Go to him and do three things, which we'll take a look at the next slide. 
three things that are very, very important in order to destroy the Sobaos. Number one, the first point. When the Satpurush gives guidance on how to eradicate such Sobaos, guidance. Guidance meaning, how can guidance be given? Two ways. One is if the Satpurush gives guidance from ahead, that's the best. But suppose that the Satpurush does not tell us anything. It is our job to identify our nature, which is being an obstacle, and tell the Satpurush that this is my nature and this is an obstacle. Please help me remove my nature so I can become close with Bhagwan. I can develop a connection with Bhagwan. I can attain your Rajipo, Bhagwan's Rajipo. Loyadam Parivar Bhaktos Rajipo. Please tell me my Subhav. Something like that. So there's two ways. When the Satpurush gives guidance on how to eradicate such Subhavs, if a person has total faith in those words. See, the pathway to liberation is all based on faith, Bhakto. If one has faith, one is able to do everything everything and anything just look in the world if one has faith one is able faith or you can say confidence in oneself one is able to climb mount everest yes if one has faith one is able to become a doctor a lawyer an engineer if one has faith in oneself one is able to break world records. If one has faith, one is able to give another one's vital organs, such as kidney or other lungs or other organs. So the world is also based on some kind of faith, some kind of strength of faith. But they all differentiate. But it, for this very topic, faith in those words, in whose words? The Ekantik Satpurush's words. That's very important. Faith can be, you can say, maneuvered and given many, many directions, as I mentioned. But to narrow that force of faith down into one direction and to give or put faith into only the Ekantik Satpurush. His words is very, very necessary, very, very vital, and very, very important in the path to attaining Bhagwan Swaminara in Zarajipo, in the path to attaining liberation, in the path to destroying this cycle of life and death. It's very important. Number two. If he has deep affection for the Satpurush giving the guidance, deep affection. Bhagwan Swaminarayan states in the Vachnamrut Gadada middle chapter 54 that how much ever faith, no, how much ever affection one has for one's family relatives, if one develops the same level of affection for the Ekantik Sant, then one's gateway to liberation will be opened. That's how much affection plays a role. Well, why do you say affection? What is the reason for that? Affection because whoever one has affection for or whoever one has affection in, one is able to completely do as that person says. If we look, at, if we look into the world, if one is married, no matter how rich a husband may be, no matter how smart a husband may be, in the end of the day, the husband will always have to listen to the wife because the husband has deep affection for the wife. The husband is willing to work night and day for his wife so they can live a luxurious life, so they can get whatever they want because of that very element of deep affection. So that same hand-in-hand -hand goes for spiritual life as well. And the third point, 
no matter how painfully strong the Satpurusha's words seem, if he accepts those words for his own benefit, then his innate natures will be eradicated. I think this is probably the most important of the three points because if one cannot see one's own benefit, there is no way that one can accept the Satpurusha's words. May they be painful, may they be light. That's not the important part. The important part is looking at the Satpurush to be the most beneficial in one's life. Now, if we look into our life, wherever we see benefit, we become attracted to. Wherever we see benefit, we become submissive to that person. Wherever we see benefit, we are willing to do anything and everything for that very person. If we see benefit in attaining million dollars, we'll be able to do anything and everything to attain that million dollars. No matter what, we know there is some kind of benefit that I will get one million dollars. There's something. If we see benefit in buying a new home, there is nothing that will stand in our way to get such a home. If we have to work night and day, if we have to work a labor job, if we have to completely drain our body so that we receive enough wages or in, in a, a salary that can afford such kind of a home, we are willing to do it because we see a benefit. But the only problem is, Bhakto, we do not see a benefit in the Satpurush. A Satpurush who is completely selfless, he is completely living his life for others here on earth. He is open and he wants others to come to him so that they can all, he can also join them in God. Make them happy, make them blissful just as how much ever bliss he has. But that's very difficult because people want to travel the world. People want to experience the world and not experience Bhagwan and his Gandhik Satpurush. That's the problem. But don't worry. Bhagwan Swami Narayan always has a solution for everything. And that's what we're here for in this Yuva course. Next slide, please. So the first point is total faith in the Akantik Satpurush's words. Now, a prasang that has a historic prasang or an event that has taken place in our Pujya Guruji and Dada Guruji's life, we would like to narrate here. As you can see here, a beautiful photo has been drawn by our Adarvalab Swami. And the very sadhu sleeping right there is Puja Guruji and the very sadhu standing is our Puja Dada Guruji. Now the event is as take place is that Puja Guruji became a sadhu at a very small age, at the age of 15. And he had a tendency when he went to sleep to roll around a lot. And he would sleep in the morning or at, in the evening time in a straight position. And by the next morning, he would be completely opposite. His head would be this way, his feet would be this way. So Puja Dada Guruji would observe this. And he observed it. And one day Puja Dada Guruji decided that I want to remove this nature, this physical nature from our Puja Guruji. So, without any kind of thought, it was raining very, very hard one time. And Puja Dada Guruji thought in his mind that this is a perfect opportunity to remove this Swabhav. Now see, where Puja, Guruji, uh, Puja Dada Guruji was living, outside, 
there is this concrete slab that as you can see in the picture here. Now, it was a little high and if anyone slept on it, they would be able to, but if you rolled too much, you would fall off and you would hurt yourself. So Pujya Dada Guruji decided to tell Pujya Guruji to sleep on the concrete slab the whole night. Without any thought, Pujya Guruji has told us this story, without any thought and with full faith, even if it was raining, even if there was nothing that Pujya Guruji did wrong, Dada Guruji commanded Pujya Guruji and right there and then, Pujya Guruji in the very thunderstorm went outside became soaked in a couple of seconds and slept outside on that concrete slab the whole night. The next morning, Pujya Guruji became so happy. Dada Guruji, Pujya Dada Guruji became so happy. Why did he become happy? That our Pujya Guruji slept on the concrete slab? No. Why did Pujya Dada Guruji become happy? That Pujya Guruji slept while it was raining all night? No. Why did Pujya Guruji become happy, Dada Guruji? Because our Pujya Guruji did not have any other doubt in the words of Pujya Dada Guruji. That's why. Total faith, dear Bhakto, is required without any doubts, in order to climb the steps of liberation. This is without a doubt. Sansei Atma Vinashyati. It is said that one who doubts will fall from the path of liberation. So do not ever doubt. Do not doubt the words of the Ekantik Satpurush. The Ekantik Satpurush's words are the words of Bhagwan. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is living inside of the Ekantik Sadpurush and traveling and liberating countless souls. And through his words, many, many attain the path of Ekantik Panu. Many, many attain a very spiritual, highly spiritualized state. So, faith is in the words of the Satpurush is a very, very key element in order to destroy one Sabha, number one, and number two, in order to attain Bhagwan. Moving on, we'd like to see the next prasang, and that is regarding deep affection for the Satpurush. Our Adi Guru, Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami, Vala Bhakto. We are very, very fortunate to be in the Guru Parampara of Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami. Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami is no ordinary sadhu. In the Hari Charitranod Sagar, Sadguru Muktanan Swami is said by, by Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself to be a Sarvopari Sant, to be a Supreme Sant. Muktanan Swami is no ordinary sadhu. He is the supreme sant. Bhagwan Swaminarayan came on this earth and brought 500 nun santo with him. And out of those 500 nun santo, not only that, but he initiated more than 3,000 sadhus in a very, very short lifespan of 49 years. Out of those 3,000 plus sadhus, the top sadhu of Bhagwan Swaminarayan was and is Muktanan Swami. Muktanan Swami was educated. Muktanan Swami wrote many, many scriptures that are still available today. Muktanan Swami, his sadhuta or his saintliness cannot be compared to any others. Muktanan Swami, his skills of dancing, his skills of playing musical instruments, his skills of writing, his skills of, of 
helping others solve problems. His skills of keeping others in satsang who are about to fall were beyond comprehension. Muktanand Swami is Muktanand Swami. There is no one that can compare to him. That's how, that's how much of a great sadhu we have received in our Guru Parampara. Dear Loyadam Parivar Bhakto, the main important thing is Muktanand Swami and all his credentials. Yes, that is important. But more than that, understand that we have received Muktanand Swami in our Guru Parampara. We as Loyadam Parivar Bhakto have received Muktanand Swami in our Guru Parampara. That is the important factor. And without such kind of understanding, many, many faults will remain. But there is a prasang in the life of Sadhguru Shri Muktanand Swami regarding deep affection that we would like to take a look at. There is a bhakta by the name of Punja Bhagat that Muktanand Swami was fond of. And Punja Bhagat was fond of Muktanand Swami. One day, Muktanand Swami was bathing near a river. And after he is done bathing, the upper garment he had washed, but the lower garment that he was wearing was remaining to be washed. And Punja Bhagat came. He was a very, very good Bhagat by nature and had very, very good innate of uh, nature of doing seva and serving santos had great mahima glory for Muktanand Swami and all santos Punjab Bhagat decided to wash Swami's lower garment Swami said stop stop right there Punjab Bhagat folded his hands yes Swami did I do something wrong Swami said are you a karma yogi or a saink yogi now Bhaktos Karma Yogi meaning, are you a householder or are you a Sankh Yogi? Meaning, are you a, a renunciant? That's the question Muktanand Swami asked. He, Muktanand Swami only asked this question once, not more than once. But, the miraculous event that happened after was something else. Punjab Bhagat had a family, he had a farm, he had luxuries, he had wealth, everything, everything he had. But, Muktan Swami said, do not touch my lower garment. Do not touch it, please. Punjab Bhagat said, why not, Swami? He said that you are a karma yogi, you are a householder. Householders do not touch my, you are not eligible to touch my lower garment, to wash my lower garment. Only those who are Sankyogi, those who are renunciants, can wash my lower garment. Punja Bhagat right there and then decided that I am this unfortunate that I am not able to even touch Swami's garments. What sin have I done? I do not want to live this household life without the service of Muktanand Swami. Bunja Bhagat Bhaktos, you may not believe, left all of his luxuries, farm, family behind, his family, friends, everything behind. So then he can serve Muktanand Swami and he became a renunciant just so that he can serve Muktanand Swami. Think about how much deep affection Punja Bhagat must have for Muktanand Swami. Now, if we introspect and think, do I even have 1% of such kind of affection for Santos, Bhaktos, Puja Guruji, our Guru Parampara, our Muktanand Swami? Do we even have 1%? Think about it. We may not be able to renounce the whole worldly life but can we renounce our sobhavs can we not can we not let go of our bad habits to please maharaj takurji maharaj 
और मुक्तानंद स्वामी पूज्य गुरु जी और गुरु परंपरा लोया दाम परिवार भक्तों कैन वी नॉट एस्क आवर सेल्फ वाई डू यू वॉन्ट अ स्टे एट द सेम लेवल वाई डू वी नॉट वॉन्ट अ अपग्रेड वाई डू वी नॉट वॉन्ट टू अटेन भगवान राजीप हो वाई नॉट वाई नॉट देर फोर इट्स वेरी वेरी वाइडल भक्त टू डिवेलप deep affection for the ekantik satpurush in order to attain and walk the path of god it's just not possible and this example of punja bhagat is something that touches our heart because of just one statement of muktanand swami punja bhagat renounced the worldly life so he can serve muktanand swami that is our muktanand swami that is his nature that is his greatness that is his words that is his power his nature and we have received muktan swami in our guru parampara that's why we are very fortunate nonetheless the third point in the next slide we'll see no matter how painfully strong words may be accept those words to be for one's own benefit As you can see in the image here Sadguru Shri Gunatitanand Swami resides Sadguru Gunatitanand Swami was the mahant of Junagadh Mandir in the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan the head of the mandir for 40 years and he talked many many principles and many many different kinds of topics in his vato that is available regarding Bhagwan Swami Narayan Sarvopanipanu regarding destroying natures regarding jeev the soul regarding developing dharma bhakti gnana vairagya all these different kinds of topics swami discussed and many bhaktos and santos would reside in an assembly and sit before him at that time shivlal shet a very very wealthy businessman even the king of bhavnagar would ask for money from shivlal shet as a loan and take money that's how rich that's how great shivlal shet was as a businessman at that time one time sadguru uh, gunatitanand swami was conducting his vato he was speaking and shivlal shet came and sat there shivlal shet came and sat and in his mouth was a piece of betel nut now shivlal shet was chewing that betel nut making noises and the whole assembly was disturbed a little bit and gunatitanand swami saw that this shet was chewing very loudly and disturbing and he was especially chewing a betel nut so gunatitan swami said in his words what is this dog eating what is this dog chewing on a bone he did not directly say shivlal shet's name but shivlal shet figured it was him because he was the only one chewing on that betel nut very 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 profusely right there and then shivlal shet folded his hands got up went to the rest area spat out this betel nut washed his mouth came into the assembly performed dhanvats to swami and sat down what is the topic no matter how much painfully words they may be he accepts those words to be his own benefit shivlal shet the king of bhavnagar would ask for money from shivlal shet spat the betel nut out washed his mouth performed dhanvats and sat back down in the assembly to hear swami's vato think about what kind of spiritual level he may have think about what kind of trust faith 
affection and benefit he must see in Gunatitan and Swami. As I mentioned before, this third point is the most important because when everything is merry, everyone accord, uh, everyone's nature is very, very nice, everyone behaves in a nice fashion, a nice manner, but only when the circumstances become difficult, only when the Satpurush twists our nature, only when the Satpurush takes our nature and makes it into a roller coaster. Only when the Satpurush attacks our nature, that is only when we can find out if we have understood him to be beneficial or not. Therefore, there is one thing that we must do. The Satpurush does not like doing this third step because it's very, very hard to find such an eligible person that will be able to hold on to the Satpurush and also accept his harsh words. But it is our duty, if we want to destroy our nature, it is our duty to fold our hands and to tell the Akantik Satpurush to help eradicate one's nature. To tell the Akantik Satpurush to tell us harsh words so we can eradicate our innate nature. It is very, very important to do so. Only then when the Satpurush sees in our eyes that this Mumukshu, this spiritual seeker, wants to destroy his nature, will he start to, will he begin this procedure of slowly but surely destroying that nature, that nature which is causing the cycle of life and death, that very nature which is keeping us distant from God and His Son, that very nature which is destroying, or which, are, which is disturbing our Loyadam Parivar Bhakto, that nature the Satpurush will destroy for us. Only when we help Him unlock these three methods, only when we abide by these three elements in our life. Therefore, Bhaktos, it is very, very important to do so. Moving on to the next slide. At the end of this paragraph of the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Swami Narayan says, no matter, no other method, except for this, there is no other method. Therefore, regardless of how much God or the Satpurush insults him for the purpose of eradicating his sobhaus, and regardless of how the harsh words they may utter, a person, a person who wishes to eradicate his innate, innate natures should not feel hurt in any way and should consider only the virtues of the person advising him. Should not feel hurt in any way. This is very important. If one becomes hurt, then one, then the Satpurush will become scared of telling such a bhakta. But if one stays very, very calm and feels that this Satpurush is telling us for our own benefit, then the Satpurush will feel more, you can say, obliged to tell the Mumukshu about his nature. So there is no other method. The only method is to go to the doctor and get the medicine you need and take the medicine to become better. In the same way, to go to the Ekantik Satpurush we have to tell him our problem and to tolerate his harsh words to develop deep affection and to have faith in his words is the only method according to the Vachnamrut Gadara middle chapter 37 to destroy our innate nature so this conducts the Vachnamrut for this Yuha course Gadara middle chapter 37 we'd like to move on to the next slide for the Kalyankanika Kalyankanika is a very, very uh, important book in our Parivar that our Puja Guruji's Vato, just like how there is Sadguru Shri Gunatitan and Swami Vato, Sadguru Shri Goparan Swami Vato, 
Our Puja Guruji has conducted many, many kathas, and from those kathas, there has been a book that has extracted very, very important vato uh, in various topics. And from that, there is this one vat of Kalyankanika we would like to take. One shouldn't have a stubborn nature. A person with such a nature will surely fall from the path of liberation. It's Kanika 5, vat number 51. Very, very simple, short, but very effective statement our Puja Guruji has stated here. One shouldn't have a stubborn nature. A stubborn nature, a nature that is very rigid, a nature which is uh, no other person around in their surroundings like, such a stubborn nature one shouldn't have. A person with such a nature will surely fall from the path of liberation. A person who has a stubborn nature, a nature of not willing to change, will fall from the path of liberation. How so? Because if we have the nature of, 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 of wanting ego, or we are egotistical ourselves, and if we do not change, that in the future when someone does not praise us, or if in the future if someone does not credit us, then we will develop a negative vibe we may even insult, we may even demonically hurt the other bhakta of God. And due to that, we may fall from the path of liberation. Therefore, it is very, very important not to develop a stubborn nature. And if one has a stubborn nature, to change that stubborn nature via the association of the Akantik Satpurush. Moving on, next slide, please. The charitra here of stubborn nature equals no rajipo is of Shantanan Swami and Muktanan Swami and Gunati Tanan Swami. In short, Shantanan Swami had a stubborn nature, and due to that, he did not receive the rajipo that Sadguru Sri Gunati Tanan Swami received from Sriji Maharaj. You'd be able to read this charitra in the PDF course layout of week one, which has been posted in all Vedam Parivar WhatsApp groups. And the second charitra in the second slide you'll be able to see is law to loss due to Subhav. And that is another uh, charitra of Shad Sadguru Sri Gunatitanan Swami and of a bhakta of the name of Bhagubai. And that also will be found in the PDF course. So finally, Bhaktos, it is very, very important as Loya Parivar Bhakto to join in this UA course for those who are of the age of 18 and above and range from 18 to the age of 45 as UAs, as adults, young adults and adults. Our Puja Guruji specially insists on those bhaktos to join in our Yua course, which is in English and which is in Gujarati. Yesterday, our Puja Rushi Swami did it in Gujarati, and the Katha will be uh, is uploaded in our Loyada Mandir YouTube channel. And today is the English version, and from there, we can analyze in our life and also prepare for an examination which will come in the future. So, our Puja Guruji's inspiration is for all those adults of Luedam Parivar to develop such knowledge of the Vachnamrut, such charitras of our Guru Parampara, especially Sadguru Sri Muktanand Swami and Kalyankanika, and to become well-rounded Luedam Parivar Bhakto so that we can attain the Rajipo of Thakurji Maharaj, our Divine Guru Parampara, our Puja Guruji, and all Loyadam Parivar Bhakto. So this ends week one of Yuva Course 2021. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.